What up, AVG crew? I'm DJ. I'm Alan. We're playing a Stanley's Parable. Let's see what's going to happen this time. We have a bunch of endings, that, apparently, that we didn't do. So. Yeah. Well, this is just like Henry Stickman. We just got to find, pick the stuff that we didn't pick last time. Okay, so last time we did all the things he didn't say. But I wanted to pull up. It's a decision tree for, for this game, and I want to have it up so I know exactly oh, what I'm doing. I don't know what's going to happen, but I do know that I should do something. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. So we're being good this time, okay, right? Okay, we're being good. We're following the instructions. What's gonna happen? What's he gonna say? Know, man. He likes us now. We're being good. We're good boys now. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. It'd be rough to work at a job like this, dude. <laughs> it's so... Yeah. Oh, from closet. <laughs> can open that. It's not locked. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. <laughs> what if I don't turn around? What if I stay in here? Uh-oh. Stay in there. There was Do nothing stuff. here. No choice to make, no path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. Ooh, he closed the door. Are you, are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm I'm genuinely confused. <laughs> <laughs> so easy to make him mad. <laughs> broom closets are awesome. You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? <laughs> if I said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friends, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. <laughs> I hope your friends find this concerning. Broom closet ending was my favorite, Alan. I didn't know if I told you this. Stanley was fat. Oh, really? I gotta try really it. Stupid. He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. Bad all with drug money. Also, Stanley oh. is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> well. Whoa, Jeez, narrator. narrator. <laughs> well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. He or she has fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. Instruct another human to take their place at the computer, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and <laughs> filling them in on the history of narrative ah, tropes in video talking. gaming, so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. As right. a hater, dude. When you've done that, just step out into the hallway. Sorry, we. No. No. <laughs> He's got to say something else. Whoa. Room closet is kind of messy. No joke. They also should have painted the walls. Like, why did they not finish? Yeah, that's a nice touch that they didn't touch. Yeah, that they didn't finish the touches. Okay, I think that's it. I don't know. Okay. I don't want to leave. I like how mad it made him. <laughs> ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. Okay, that's true. We did pretty bad the first time. We made a lot of choices. <gasps> we can go downstairs? Ooh, yeah, go downstairs. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Oh, shoot. No, we went downstairs. Ooh. Whoa. There's a car. There's a car. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? What? Why did doors <laughs> close automatically behind him wherever he went? Ooh. And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. 
Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. He imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. What? Oh, oh shoot. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. Oh. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. He's How was he dreaming, remaining then? so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. Why is there a voice in my head <laughs> dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my oh. thoughts. He what? A loop. And while he thought it all very odd and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. I am okay. What just happened? <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He's... Stanley began screaming. Please, someone wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Oh. Dude. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. What? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. What but the? on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. She thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. <laughs> then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. So it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. We went crazy. <laughs> Dang! All right, what else you got, okay. game? Yeah, well, <laughs> show us something else weird. What other weird okay, now, stuff you got? Now up go sleep? upstairs instead of downstairs. See okay. What happens. I'm like clicking everything now. I'm like, what? What does everything do? Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference. <laughs> nor did it advance the story in any way. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna touch everything now. Awaiting input. Oh, input received. What is this? It looks like one out of five. Maybe you need to find another one. Okay, I did one thing. That's something different. <laughs> this game, man. Right? It like teases you. But we're in like some sort of dream? Wait, is this getting different? Whoa, this doesn't look the same. No, it doesn't. Like, didn't that normally lead to the two door yeah. choice? Yeah. Did pressing those things change the layout of the building? Oh, oh here we go. When Stanley came to a set of okay. two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay, so we go left and upstairs, you think? E yeah, let's just do it. Sorry, I'm checking everything now, guys. <laughs> okay, up to the office. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. All right. Ooh, this is... This doesn't look the same as last time. No, it doesn't. 
What's <laughs> happening? What is happening? <laughs> Remember he had the, the panda bear? It was a the, green. Yeah, it was green. There was a staircase up to like his office area. What the heck? Okay, okay. Interesting. Oh. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. <gasps> 2845. Did I hit it? Yeah. I, let's just do what he wants this time. Okay, we'll do what he wants. Okay, we're doing what he wants. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct oh. code by sheer luck. Amazing. <laughs> oh. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Whoa, it's so what? tall. <laughs> yeah, this office is so tall, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's an elevator. Whoa, an elevator. Just go in. I don't know, man. I don't trust any of this. <laughs> well, we did everything he's asked us to do so far. Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Ugh. Okay. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read God. Mind Control Facility. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Let's do it. Oh, there's another way. Escape. <laughs> now the game is like, if you if you followed everything up to this point, it's kind of hinting at not following it. Do we keep following it or do we go to the escape? What do we do, Alan? I don't know. I kind of want to see if you follow everything, how far can they push us to not follow it, you know? I see what you're saying. Okay, let's try it. What's that say? Ugh, what does that say? It's just like a repeated numbers. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. Oh my what gosh. horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley Whoa. thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Whoa. Uh, the obedient mind controlly. <laughs> now the monitors Whoa. jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee <gasps> in the building, Stanley's co workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Employee. Which one are we again? 424. We were 427. 427. 427. It's like over there somewhere. I'll, I'll keep it's an gonna, eye on it. Okay. Wait. Four, two, two, seven. Two, right there, right, seven, in the right there. Let's see what it looks like. That's us. That's not. <laughs> that's yeah, our, that's us. That's our room. Other people have such nicer rooms. I'm yeah. Like the worst. <laughs> they didn't like us at our company. <laughs> okay. This mind control facility. It was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? Dude, this game's too much, man. <laughs> no. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. What's that? But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy, or sad, or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Okay, I'll go do the thing, Alan. There's so many other choices! I know! <laughs> There's so many other things I want to do. <laughs> okay, this is the good boy path. Good boy path. Let's play good, boys. good boy path. We have to resist. Mind control idle. Waiting input. What? Wait, do you think we should go in there, or do you think we should hit these buttons? For There's a four over go. there. Is that another number? Three. Oh, shoot. You think we have to go one, two, three, four, five? Is that a two? Two. two. One. Oh, okay. Here we go. Yeah. Don't know what this is gonna do. 
Or if this is the right order. <laughs> Nothing happened. Okay, okay. Let's, Let's go, go in this room. System power, on and off, okay. And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Good boy, Path. Good boy, Path. Wait. Oh, Stanley. Oh, I hit the wrong thing! No! <laughs> After they kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself, is that Oh, you shoot! Bad boy controls! <laughs> sorry, I can't do anything good, I'm sorry, Alex. <laughs> I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. Oh, no. In the event that this machine is activated without proper <laughs> DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Mm, let's say um, two minutes. Ah, now this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? It's your time to shine. You are the star. It's your story now. Shape it to your heart's desires. What oh, this the is heck? much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. Mere moments until the bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. More time to talk about you, about me, where we're going. What all this means, I barely know where to start. How do you get out? What's that? You'd like to know where your co-workers are? I'll tell you exactly what happened to them. I erased them. I turned off the machine. Wait, was that door open? Free. Of course, that was merely in this instance oh. of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your office forever, pushing buttons endlessly and then dying alone. What the heck? Are we gonna die? There's gotta be, there's like, you know, there's one, two, three, four, five. My goodness, only 34 seconds left. Oh no, but we're I'm dead. I'm enjoying this so much. You oh, know there's what? a red button. To hell with it. I hit the red button. Put some extra time there's on the a password? Clock. Why not? Oh, there's oh, so many like clues. What's the matter, Stanley? Is it that you have no idea where you're going or what you're supposed to be doing right now? Or did you just assume when you saw that timer that something in this room was capable of turning it off? <laughs> look at you. Running from button to button, screen <laughs> to screen, clicking on every little thing in this room. These numbered buttons, no, these colored ones, or maybe this big red button on this <laughs> door. Why would you think that, Stanley? That this video game can be beaten? One <laughs> solved? Do you have any idea what your purpose what in this place is? <laughs> Stanley. You're in for quite a disappointment. We're gonna die out. I'm sorry. Destroyed first, so you can't. Take a look at the clock, Stanley. That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. 30 Whoa. seconds until a big boom and then nothing. No ending here. Just you being blown to pieces. Will you cling desperately to your frail life, or will you let it go peacefully? Another oh. choice. Make it count. Oh, or don't. It's all the same to me. All a part of the joke. And believe me, I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life from the moment we fade in until the moment Whoa. I say happily ever up. Oh. <laughs> it looked like you sort of knew what you were doing there. I definitely didn't, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was just reading things and then going, ah, I don't know. It's, it's red button. I remember red button. There was a thing. Well, I think that that's a good enough for an episode today. Yep. We, we, we died. <laughs> Oh my gosh, there's more to- there's so much more. Okay. Well guys, we hope you enjoyed this. Peace out! I mean, AVG out!